Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of, let me fix the microphone, Adam's Music Box, where today we're talking all about the time when Stevie met Tonto. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, Tonto is the name of a band, um, a band that didn't sell many records, but whose members, whose two members, were extremely influential on the sound of a lot of great records, not least the best albums of Stevie Wonder's long and very rich career. And the two men in it were Robert Margulith and Malcolm Cecil. And between the two of them, they formed what was called Tonto's Exploding Headband. And they recorded their first album in 1971. But it was in 1972 that they really began to make the huge impact on music because they met Stevie Wonder. And this was at a time when Stevie Wonder wanted to break free from the very very rigid, the really great, but rigid production style of Motown. Barry Gordy knew what he wanted his Tamla Motown records to sound like in the 60s, and they all sounded great. But many artists, both Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, wanted something different. They wanted to take production more into their own hands. This resulted in What's Going On, the seminal album by Marvin Gaye, and it um, and it led also to one of Stevie Wonder's very most uh, important albums that really set the tone for all of his later work. And this was 1972's Music of My Mind. And this was the first collaboration he had with Tonto. Now, he used the guys in Tonto not so much to compose, because he was the composer, but to arrange along with him, because they were masters of the modern synthesizer. And their setup involved, as you can see behind me, um, multiple analog modular synthesizers, all working in unison. Uh, both Margolith and Cecil were absolute, uh, they were just big, big people when it came to knowledge of rock Robert Moog and others synthesizers of the time. And so their contribution to this album of Stevie Wonder was helping to program and arrange the sounds of the synthesizer, which Stevie absolutely loved. He was looking essentially for a vehicle to propel him into the next phase of his career. Everyone knew that he was a virtuoso in terms of songwriting and performing, but he wanted to do something to take things to the next level with sound. And the two guys in Tonto and their wonderful collections of synthesizers helped Stevie Wonder to do just that. The next album they worked on together was Talking Book, and this one took things much further into the realm of synthesizers than Music of My Mind. Some say that it's the best Stevie Wonder album ever. It's got Superstition, which is kind of his signature song. I love Blame It on the Sun, which he co-wrote with Sarita Wright, who was a kind of protege of Stevie Wonder. Um, you Are the Sunshine of My Life. Everyone loves that one. It's just there's not a bad song on the album. It's it's absolutely one of those perfect albums start to finish. And the, the layered synthesizers, as well as other keyboards, clavinet, Fender Rhodes, etc. It really made it it really made a bold statement that Stevie Wonder is the master of all keyboards, not just piano. And he was very liberal in his use of these different sounds. Um, picture it like a kind of a, a kid in a candy shop. Tonto were the Willy Wonkers, if you will. Stevie Wonder was the kid and he knew exactly what to do with all of these sounds that he now had access to. And the collaborations just went from strength to strength. Uh, the following year, they worked on Inner, Inner Visions, another great album with some absolutely classic songs, Living for the City, classic, Higher Ground, absolutely classic, another one of my absolutely favorite Stevie Wonder songs. And then they went on to one that I can never pronounce, even though I've had it for a long time, for Feelingness' first finale. Try saying that a few times fast. Boogie on Reggae Woman, great song. Please Don't Go, another great one. And then um, another song that probably along with Talking Book is considered two of the absolute classic albums of Stevie Wonder's career. And this one, loads of hit, I Wish, what a song. 
uh, Isn't She Lovely, one of the most famous songs that he's ever done, Pastime Paradise, which had a second life in the 1990s when it was sampled by Coolio for his song uh, Gangster's Paradise from the film Dangerous Minds. And all of this stuff from this wonderful mid-70s period of Stevie Wonder really made it clear that he was someone who was using all of the latest and most interesting technology of the 70s to its full advantage. And one of the reasons that he was so important in terms of his pioneering use of synthesizers is that he wasn't using them to make experimental music. He wasn't using them to make, uh, you know, dissonant or weird music. He was using them to create textures and sound palettes and melody lines in music that was written for everyone to enjoy. He brought synthesizers to the masses, proving that the combination of inherent virtuosity, which is what he was always known for, with these new sounds and creating things that people will enjoy hearing rather than just be shocked by hearing, he proved that that was possible. And in so doing, paved the way for simpler mainstream music using synthesizers, but he also exposed audiences to this kind of music that would then make people a lot in, in many cases want to explore further into this world of synthesizer music the 70s everyone was synth crazy and the 80s synthesizers got cheaper so they went more on the pop side but along with people like keith emerson like robert moog himself like rick wakeman stevie wonder is one of the absolute godfathers of modern synthesizer usage in music that everyone loved to hear like subscribe we will see you next time Take care.